Hello, my friends. It's time for IMO. Let's have a look on the fresh problems taken from IMO 2022. This is Webpeak. Don't forget to subscribe if you like my videos. The first problem is the single player game. The Bank of Oslo issues two types of coins aluminum and bronze, denoted by A and B. Marianne has N coins of each type arranged in a row in some arbitrary order. We call it a chain for any subsequence of consecutive coins of the same type. Now, given a fixed positive integer k, Marvian repeats the following operation. She identifies the longest chain containing the cave coin and moves all those coins to the left of the row. For example, when k is 4, with the initial ordering a a b b b a b a, the process is illustrated below, where we end up with b b b b a a a a after three moves. The question is to find all the pairs n and k, such that for every initial ordering, the left n coins are all of the same type at some point during the process, just like the above example. If you would like to think about the problem, pause the video here. The solution is coming right away. Let me start with some simple observations. First, when k is smaller than n, we can easily construct counterexamples. Indeed, consider the case where the first k coins are of type A, and the next n coins are of type B, and finally, the last n minus k coins are again of type A. To make it concrete, here is an example for n equals to 4 and k equals to 3. As the chain already sits at the left hand side of the row, the sequence remains the same before and after the move, so we stuck at the same ordering forever. This means k must be larger or equals to n. Next, let me introduce a notation where I use the closed interval i and j to denote the longest chain containing the cave coin. In other words, the chain starts with the i coin and ends at j coin, and all the coins in between has the same type. In particular, if i equals to 1, then the chain covers all the coins between 1 and k. Since we know that k is larger than n, so necessarily the left n coins are already in the same type. So this is already what we want and we have nothing to do. As a consequence, we only need to work on the case where i is strictly larger than 1. The main idea is to count the number of chains in the sequence. In this example, initially we have 5 chains, a a b b b a, B, and A. After the move, the number is down to 4, and then it goes down to 3 and 2. So what we need to do is to identify what triggers the decrease. My claim is that when J is smaller than 2N, the number of chains decrease after the move. Indeed, if this is the case, the chain containing I-1 and the chain containing j plus 1 exist, because i is strictly larger than 1 and j is strictly smaller than 2n. Now, since they have the same type of coins, after the move, those two chains are put together, collapse into a single chain. This is why when the condition j is smaller than 2n guarantees the decrease in the number of chains. Now let me interpret this condition in a slightly different way. What it is essentially saying is that no chain is able to cover both the cave coin and the last coin. In other words, this happens when the chain containing the last coin has length smaller than 2n minus k plus 1. If this keep happens again and again, the number of chains will keep decreasing until only two chains are left. One contains n coins of A and the other contains n coins of B. That's what we are looking for. 
The remaining question is whether we can guarantee the decrease. To answer it, we put ourselves into the case where both k and 2n covers by the same chain. In this case, we take the chain out during the move and put it in the front on the left hand side. Now there are two set of views. First, if all the chains in the sequence have length at least 2n minus k plus 1, then no matter how we move, the last chain will always cover both k and 2n. In this case, we will just be looping around every time moving the last chain to the left, like the above example. Now assume that this is not the case, there is a chain with length smaller than 2n minus k plus 1. Then after some moves, the last chain will not cover the entire interval between k and 2n, which from the previous claim, the number of chains will decrease after the move. So in a high level, the question boils down to check the length of the chains. Here comes the final nice. Let m be the integer part of n over 2. When m is larger than 2n minus k plus 1, we take the following sequence, starting with m a, m b, n minus m a, and finish with m minus m b. By construction, we ensure that each chain has length at least m, which is larger than 2n minus k plus 1. So the sequence will keep turning around and the process fails. On the other hand, when k is smaller than 2n minus n over 2, by pigeonhole principle, if a have at least two chains, then one of them must be smaller than n over 2 plus 1. So the number of chains will decrease until there is only one chain of a left. In this case, we guarantee that the number of chains will decrease to 2, and we get what we want. So the solution set is all the integer k between n and 2n minus n over 2. That's it. Hope you enjoyed the solution. See you next time. Bye bye.